So Sheikh, first and foremost, welcome. I uh, wanted to yeah. ask you kind of how your Ramadan's been going. Obviously, first 10 days already kind of a wrap, right? And so yeah. kind of, you know, what's your Ramadan been like? You know, what's been the first 10, what's the first 10 days been like for you? Uh, how has this Ramadan, you know, been for you in terms of just experience? And obviously, you know, you go through the years, you try to kind of, you know, hold tight to some memories that you have. So how's Ramadan been for you so far? Alhamdulillah, bismillah, 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 salam ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala alihi wa Ramadan's been beautiful, man. I mean, I'm surprised 10 days has surpassed already, you know. You know, subhanAllah, Allah Taala mentions uh, the passing of time in the dunya. He says, mm. كَأَنَّهُ لَمْحٌ بِالْبَصَرِ mm. وَمَا أَمْرُنَا إِلَّا وَاحِدِ كَلَمْحٌ بِالْبَصَرِ mm. So it's just like the lifespan or the time of life, the span of life is like the blink of an eye. Mm. Mm. So time goes by so quick. I'm surprised it's been 10 days already. Yeah, so alhamdulillah, it's, it's going to go by quick. You know, some, some part of your nafs says, great. Yeah. But then the other part is like, no, I really want to absorb this and be present every moment yeah. of the fast and every night. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I, also, as you get older, you kind of start to realize that time does move a little bit faster, right? You're trying to kind of like yeah. capture those moments. My grandfather used to say that time's like one of those things that you're trying to hold on to it with your hands, but it just kind of slips through the cracks and Allah goes Allah. through, subhanAllah. But it's cool you, I use the old joke with me, but I, I'll, let, I'll let this. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. Sheikh Omar does it all the time, so I thought I'd just <laughs> go to the tradition. <laughs> that's, that's no, true. but alhamdulillah, um, you know, I wanted to kind of have Sheikh, you know, come by today. <laughs> and I was kind of speaking to him a little bit earlier this week because, Sheikh, you know, a lot of the, the reminders you share with the community, mm. uh, a lot of it revolves around the idea of discipline. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being poised, having fortitude, um, not taking your foot off the gas. Right. right. I mean, these principles, although you kind of see it talked about in a lot of like motivational snippets nowadays in modern day right. times, yeah, yeah. they were actually instilled by the Prophet 1500 years ago. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I, the first thing I wanted to start off with is that mm. in order to really understand the concept of something, you have to talk about like why that thing's important. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Self-discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially in regards to Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Like we said, we're already 10 days in, 10 nights in. These are the stereotypical 10 days in the middle where people do kind of like tend to just kind of take their foot off the gas a little <laughs> bit. Right. Like everyone's all in first 10 nights. Everyone's all in last <laughs> 10 nights. Those middle 10 nights yeah. really kind of like it's like it's filtered out. Right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the people who are sticking That's through right. it, right. mashallah, they kind of grind through those middle 10. Yeah. So. In your experience and also in your life, what has been the importance of self-discipline? Like, why is that such a focal point in our religion? Uh, I always start off with a story, man. When I was looking, when I was searching for Islam, you know, I, I embraced Islam around, what, 27 years ago, something like that. 1996, I think it was. And... Uh, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, I was going around Houston, going to different mosques mm. in Southwest Houston. Anyone from Houston here? Stand up or just, yeah, okay, we got one Houstonian. One out of 6,000. Two, three, four. I, lo I, lo I love how you all start coming out of the woodworks once like one person raised their hand. The other and then they're graduate raising. They get, they oh, someone else? Okay. Yeah. So, oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Yes, yes, so um, I'm from Southwest Houston. Mm. You know, they call it SWAT, I think they call it now, right? But, uh, you know, I remember when I was searching for Islam, I would go to different mosques around the Houston area. And I went to this one mosque, it's called Mecca Masjid in, in Houston. And I remember going there and I talked to the Imam, Dr. Shigron, he's from Libya. Mm. And he was like the head of the math department at the community college in Houston. And uh, I asked him about Islam and he was telling me about Islam. He said, you know, Islam, you know, you bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship except God. I said, check. Then Muhammad is his messenger. Okay, mm. I'll, I'll check. And then, you know, we pray five times a day. Huh? <laughs> I never forget this, man. I say, five times a day for the rest of my life. Mm. Like, there's no weekends or anything like that. No roll. You know, back in the day with the phones, it was like he had rollover minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no rollover prayers. Like, you yeah, know, yeah, Friday yeah. night, you know what I'm saying? Let me be me. Yeah, and yeah. then the rest of the six I'll days. Do, I'll do like, seven on Saturday. Just I'll do seven, yeah. <laughs> seven on Saturday, <laughs> right. Sure. To wait out. Yeah. So I uh, would say to myself, like, five times a day, I have to pray for the rest of my life. That was a real life decision. Mm. So, I, you know, then I asked myself, what is better for me? Mm. Like, is it better if I was to 
try to come close to God, have undivided attention, detach from everything, yeah. people, places, and things, and just try to have an intimate conversation with God five times a day. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty serious. I think that'll make me a better man, mm. a better Muslim, someone that's closer to God, right? So that was really one of the, 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 the strong elements of Islam that served as a catalyst for my connection to God in, in an organized way. Wow. So prayer was really, really, really did it for me because, you know, generically we say prayer, you know, my mother, she's a, she's a, she's a deaconess. So mm. I'm waking up at three in the morning to her doing tongues. I don't know if y'all know what tongues are here. You don't know what tongues are? Yo, tongues is a certain, she's an ev evangelical Christian. Inshallah, she'll become Muslim. Inshallah. 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 She Allah. lives here with me. She put the hijab on the other day. She makes it and praises. Yeah, yeah, Inshallah. inshallah. But uh, it's, uh, it's where you, you, you feel the spirit has come into you and you speak in a certain language. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not understood, but you're like at the, you're experiencing rohaniya, like the mm. spirit is really there with you. Mm. So just me looking at her and just thinking, okay, if I try to pray five times a day to the creator, I think that's going to be better for me. So that would require discipline, would require struggle, would require times I don't want to do it, but I know it's better for me. SubhanAllah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, right? Because the story of learning that there's five prayers a day for the rest of your life, no mm -hmm. days off like you mentioned, um, there's a certain kind of just the idea of istiqama that you stick with when it comes to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, you know, one of the, 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 the challenges of the younger generation is this idea of like, I'm going to try to kind of get like one big kind of action in <laughs> that like kind of gets my spirituality up right, right. but then kind of like the rest of it you know we'll, we'll, we'll see right but if, as long as I can get that one mm. but you know one of the interesting things about istiqamah shaykh is that a lot of times those who are kind of putting an effort to get closer to Allah right. one of the challenges is actually that shaitan might actually try to sway you a little bit more right because again wh wh when a person has left the path of you know the deen when a, when a person's right. kind of like straight away from Allah, shaitan kind of takes his foot off the gas pedal, right? Kind of like reversing it on him now. But when a person tries to stick to Allah Ta'ala to their best of their ability, shaitan actually tries harder on that person, no right? Throws the, throws the kitchen sink at that person, tries to distract them in any way. There's narrations about this shaykh, you know, even like the Prophet is sitting and he's so talking to his companion saying that, you know, uh, drawing straight lines in the sand and drawing kind of lines coming at that straight line in the middle and saying, these are the distractions that shaitan will try to come, you know, throw at you. So, you know, in terms of discipline and istiqamah, steadfastness, sticking to it, what are some of the traps you feel, like from your experience, right, that kind of hinder a person's ability to like stick right. to the course? Like what are, what, are, what are some temptations, right? Like, right. especially in today's modern day and age, like, you know, Sheikh Mikhail was here last week, mm -hmm. and Sheikh's big on, you know, the idea of like, you know, qu quiet time, reduce mm -hmm. the noise around you, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you've noticed as a person in the community, as a leader in the community? You have your own family, your own sons, you know, like experientially, what do you feel are some big, big traps of shaitan when it comes to a person trying to stay the course? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, there's from that is um, you have the fixed mindset, you know, having a fixed mindset, thinking that you will not or that person will not increase from where they are, mm -hmm. thinking that you're always going to be this way, not allowing an opportunity for growth. I mean. As a Muslim, you believe that Allah is ala kulli shayin qadir. Mm. He's mm. able to do all things. So if he's able to do all things, he's able to make you a better person. This is what I always tell people that convert to Islam. Mm. Whether they're Muslim and born Muslim or whether they were not theoretically Muslim. Because even people that convert to Islam or those that were born Muslim, they had some type of awakening one moment in their life. You say, you know what? I think I know who God is. That mm. friend that I had, that instructor, the environment pushed me influenced me, motivated me to try to be a better person, mm. to learn about God. Now I believe that I am a, a, a Muslim, right? Mm, mm. So trying to do that, I think um, another one, and this may sound weird, but I'll explain it, is motivation. Mm. Like motivation can be a trap. Sometimes we're motivated to be disciplined, hmm. but we are not really to put that, we're not ready to put that work in. So when we're talking about motivation, you know, if you look in the Sharia, subhanAllah, Allah, every week, every day, every year, once a year, He gives you an opportunity to, to do something that will serve as a catalyst to be a better person. Mm. So like Ramadan, you will find it, that month of Ramadan was excellent. I had euphoric moments. I came closer to Allah. You know, I had my alone time. 
but was it seasonal or was it a catalyst? Mm. Was it a beginning? Was it one habit that I'm trying to get better at and I'm very sincere at it and I'm willing to do what it takes because I have a growth mindset and not a fixed mindset. I don't say, no, I'll never pray with her. With her, I'm not that righteous, bro. Go ahead and, you know, call me later. I'm going to get some Z's, mm -hmm. you know. Am I willing to sacrifice an hour of sleep for 30 minutes of time with Allah in my room alone, thinking about my sins as much as I can? Mm. Right. So that's what's really, really important. This one, one statement. Motivation moves you, but discipline proves you. So if you're motivated, you started the fire. But that was Friday, Juma. Wednesday, eh. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep, yep. Are you trying to be around people, places, and things that will keep that fire lit to where you're, 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 on, a, you're on a process, you're on a pathway of changing your life? You know, I, 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 I love how you kind of bring about, you know, some of the, the, the quotes and some of the learning moments from your life, you know. Um, I always ask this to a lot of people who swing by route sometimes for these programs. I ask mm -hmm. them, like, is, is there a person who really kind of like showed you the role model of discipline, right? Like, what does it mean to be a disciplined person? Obviously, you know, like we, we have stories of the Prophet Sallallahu and, you know, the Anbiya, alayhi salam, like, you know, the, the people that came before him. Um, but to kind of make it really personal, right? Um, was there a person in your life that kind of like showed you what istiqama is, right? I mean, a person who basically no matter what happens year after year decade after decade they've kind of stuck with it um I, I always tell the story sometimes like there, there was a mesh that i went to one time where you know it was kind of like a younger demographic program um and this mashallah i, I want to share something with you guys is really really important here yeah. we're really lucky to have a community space and a masjid next to it you yeah. know the yeah, Sheikh, you know this like the combination of the two in one yeah, it, it leads to a lot of like confrontations not like in a bad way but like Everyone wants to prove their love to Allah in a, in a, in a different way, yeah, right? So yeah, for some people, it's like, I'm going to make it to the masjid like 30 minutes before the salah time. Mm -hmm. Some people are like, no, 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 I want to like read my Quran. I want to enjoy the dars. I want to enjoy the halaqa. Right. So there was like a halaqa going on with all these young people. And like the older masjid uncle kind of swung by. And he was like getting a little antsy about the salah time. Because, you know, sometimes when halaqas go long a little bit, like, the 8.30 Isha time gets to 8.32, 8.33. 8.32, and, so, and so the uncle got like irritated, like literally visibly irritated. Yeah. And, I, and so I went up to him after, and this is when I was like maybe like 2019. Mm -hmm. And I went up to him and I said, uncle, you know, like there's a lot of people here who came for the first time. They're not pulling the pitch of like, you know, mm -hmm. some people may be new to this place. But he goes, and he told me something that really kind of like stuck. And he was like an older 70, maybe 75. Yeah. And he's like, if these people don't understand that we pray at 8.30, then what's going to happen to all your halakas that you invite them to? Mm -hmm. Like he was like, y you have to teach them that 8.30 is the time when you pray to God. Like mm -hmm. you can pick up back in your conversations right after, but 8.30 is like the time for Allah, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, that, that kind of stuck out to me in my experience a little bit. Like is there any moment that you had like that, that kind of you had a conversation with somebody or you experienced somebody in your life where they kind of showed you like what istiqama, what discipline really is, steadfastness really is? Man, there's a lot. Um, man, where do, where, do, where, do, where do I begin? Really, with, with, with discipline, because um, there's, there's one of my friends, subhanAllah. Um, he was actually one of my mentors. His name was Saul, but he was from Philly. Mm -hmm. He's an older gentleman. When I embraced Islam, a lot of times I would see him just reading the Quran in English. Mm. Right? And there was a master we used to walk to in Houston right around the corner. And he always used to say, how many Muslims read the Quran cover to cover? You think he might? You, you, know, you try to be Muslim, you ain't read the Quran cover to cover. You ain't read the Quran cover to cover, cover to cover. I'm like, man, calm down. You trying to hypnotize me, man? <laughs> you know, it's like, but I saw when he would talk about Islam, he would always reference the Quran. Mm. But then he really said to me, like, and this is what Allah is saying to you, bro. Mm. Like, do you really want to know what God is telling you? I'm like, yeah, of course. That's why I became a Muslim. So if God was telling you how to live your life, what are you willing to put in for it? When he said it like that, and I saw him consistently reading the Quran, I said, man, I, I really have to read the Quran cover to cover. Mm. And it was interesting because that same masjid, there was a sheikh there, Hussam Uddin. He used to lead the, you know, the prayer. And uh, I'd see him teach the Quran to the young boys. And I, I didn't know why they would be doing this. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. I don't know what that is yet, but I'm, you know, it's all good. So I'd go there for Maghrib. Maghrib prayer, the evening prayer. 
and I remember one day uh, I sat down with him, with the brother Naeem, because it was, it was Naeem, Sabat, and I. We would always hang out with each mm -hmm. other. And I would learn a lot from them, just passive learning. So I sat down with Osama Dean one day, and uh, Naeem was reading to him. He was like, ba, and Naeem was like, ba. And he was like, ain. And he was like, ain. He was like, la, ain. I, I, I. And I'm like, what is going on up in this joint? <laughs> like, what is he doing? I didn't know what was going on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So then he's, he's like, ba, hata, ba, ta, fa, ta, ta, ba, ta. And I'm like, all right, this sounds cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The choir? Yeah, yeah I was like, like, you know, it's, it was cool. And, you know, he's doing the thing, and I'm like, okay. Mm. You know, so I'm sitting, I sit down, and then he slides the book over to me. And this is Qad Nuraniya, like mm. the book that teaches yeah. you Arabic letters and, and phonetics, right? So he says, Alif. And I'm like, he's like, Iqra. And wallahi, at that time, I was like, Ma ana I was like, <laughs> I can't read this, man. What is this, by the way? Yeah. He's like, this is Arabic. So then he tells me, ah, and I'm like, ah, ba, ba, right? Mm. So I start, and he tells me to keep going. He closes the book. He opens it back. I mean, he says, well, if you stay here and be consistent, you will be able to read better than me. And I, to be honest, I was like a kid. I was like, really? Because mm. he's the one that just led. And his voice, to this day, he's one of my top five shiuch, mashallah. He's, mashallah, tabarakallah, usamuddin. So he said, you can read better than me. And I said, what? Mm. This is Arabic. This is a, the language of the Quran. I said, what? Mm. He said, you come here every day, you can read. From that day, brother, I was there every single day after Maghrib. Yes, every single day, man. And that re that's really what did it for me. Hussam Adin has such a mm. huge right upon me and my family because mm. he took his time out to teach me the Quran every single day after Maghrib. I didn't, I didn't pass Fatih for like two weeks. Mm. He didn't let me slide. Like, I, you know, he, you know, so that was really, I think that was one of the best lessons for me. And that really, really established and strengthened my relationship with the Quran. Mm, mm, mm. Because I was like, man, this is a language that I don't know, and I'm re singing it. So when I go home and yeah. sing it to my non Muslim mother, yeah. you know, I play Sa'ad al Ghamdi. He was one of my favorite yeah, reciters. Yeah. So I used to drive my mother to work. So she said, play that music, play that music that you. I'm like, okay. So I play it. And then I'd know whichever sword it was, I knew the English. I didn't know which word meant which word, but then I'd pause it and say, you know God is saying right here. Mm. And then I'd play it again. So that really, just the consistency with the Quran, which a lot of us think is impossible because mm. we're not, we don't speak the Arabic language. Mm. It's really, really doable, especially we believe in Allah and everything's possible with Him. So, Man, subhanAllah, you know, one of the things, I, I love what you mentioned is like, the 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 humble journey of knowing that you can't get from like zero to 100 within like a month or like a week yeah. or even a year possibly right? right i think like that's one of the, the the biggest challenges for a lot of people is like the process to get to like that end goal that we always kind of see like the finished product everybody sees like those really amazing like clips of like this like reciter and that person who's really yeah. good at their field and this and like you watch like sports highlights and you're like oh my oh god like my this person god. And, and like we, we all see the finished product, right? And I'll, I, and, I'll, and it's like a sports analogy, right? Mm. But like the reality is, no one sees all of the behind the scenes work that goes into the blood, sweat, and tears, right? Mm. People don't see like you crying like in the gym like every single day, but they see like the the the, the results, right? The moment yeah. they see you. And I want to kind of you know bring this to the life of the Prophet sallallahu You know, a lot of times, right? We read the narrations and. I, Myself and Sheikh Mikhail, we spoke about this actually a couple of times a few months ago about how the, even when Muslims read stories of the Prophet wasallam, a lot of times we read those really climactic moments, right? We read about Badr, which ironically happened in Ramadan, right? We, 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 we read about Badr, we read about Uhud, we read about the, the, the coming back to Mecca, we read about all those monumental moments, mm -hmm. but sometimes we don't read about like the behind the scenes of the Prophet's life, right? Like what led to that, right? Yeah. Um, Sheikh, I wanted to ask you, in regards to the prophetic narrations, right, the prophetic narrative, what do you think like kept the Prophet Sallallahu on his journey towards Allah? For obviously, notably, was given Nubu'ah at age 40, passed away at age 63. For 23 years, this man, SubhanAllah, was working his way towards God. 23 years, obviously, to us, I mean, people who are 23 right now, obviously, it's like our entire lives, but like, 
you know, what kept him going for two decades, officially being a prophet, you know, when there were so many challenges thrown his way, right? Yeah. What do you think helped him from, like, your experience of studying, what kept him going? What was, like, the, 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 the stimulus that kept him moving forward? Well, there's many factors. I'll just touch on a couple of them, subhanAllah. But I think ultimately it's, it's his, 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 his detachment from the dunya mm. in order to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is ultimately through salah, through prayer. And from the prayers, the five prayers of Islam. But on top of that, along with that, is the prayers in the middle of the night. Mm. You know, the companions used to ask the Prophet when they see him pray, and he'd pray until he would, you know, his beard which would, would be full of tears, and they would dry, and his feet would crack, and they would say, you're praying in the middle of the night, and your sins are, your past sins and future sins are forgiven. But then he answers, he says, what? Abdan Shakura. Shall I not be a thankful servant? Even though he's a prophet, he's still doing these actions of worship to show thankfulness and gratitude to Allah. So really, the, the ultimate way of showing gratitude to your creator is trying your best to perform the system that he's given you, yeah. which is the deen of Islam. And that's what's beautiful about sharia, because the word sharia means a body of water that reaches one channel of water. So the sharia literally replenishes the soul when you try your best to practice it. Mm -hmm. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned to the companions, he said, uh, uh, if there was a river yeah. in the front of your door and you were to wash in it five times a day, would there be any traces of dirt on you? And they said, no. He said, well, that is like the prayer. It washes away the previous sins from that is from, that comes from before it. Mm -hmm. So when looking at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was really the intimate moments that he had alone with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, yeah. Starting in the cave of Hira, he received yeah. revelation and he was alone. Wow. Yeah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed it when he was at a time of, as Aisha radiallahu anha said, tahannuth. Mm -hmm. Like he was alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are so distracted. There's a really good book called Indistractable by mm -hmm. Nir Iyal. He talks about what distraction is. Distraction is really that which takes you away from traction, distraction. Mm. Right? When we look at Islam, the ultimate distraction is saying that he is like his creation because it takes you away from focusing on really, what really matters in life. So that distraction. You know, subhanAllah, it, it, it's, it's that which takes you away from living your ultimate purpose. And that's what I tell a lot of young men now that I work with. I say, your purpose in life, you know, we see with a lot of these red pill movements yeah. and blue and yellow and green, pe whatever pe pills they are. Yeah. All right, they'll say, okay, you got to be a man of purpose. Mm. But in Islam, it's more of your purpose is to worship Allah. And that doesn't mean you always have to be in the masjid. You're punching in early. You're worshiping Allah. Subhanahu. You're yeah. honest. You're worshiping Allah. That's your ultimate purpose in life, and everything should be subservient to that. Mm. So we're looking at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and seeing how he was someone that exemplified uh, this discipline, I would say ultimately, it's initially and ultimately, is to make sure, as Sheikh Mikhail mentioned, you have that you purposely detach from all distractions mm. to bring you back to focus. And when you Allah, if you take the opportunity to just take a step back and look at Islam, like look at the structure and blueprint of Islam. Five times throughout the day, I have to detach and forget about people, places, and things and just focus. And to really, really work hard to think about my sins. Mm. You know, Ibn Qayyim, he mentions in his book, Wa'ab al Sayyid, Wa'ab al Kalim al Tayyib, Invocations of God or, you know, Shower of Good Utterances. He mentions how when thinking and pondering over the sins is one of the strongest ways to obtain the mercy of Allah. How? Everyone ask me how. Good question. When you think about that sin that you've committed and you feel bad about it, that is one of the ways you'll say, I feel like a sand grain. I feel horrible. Allah has given me this faculty of sight and I'm looking at this. He's given me this faculty of hearing and I'm eavesdropping or this tongue and I'm, I'm backbiting. I feel horrible. That is the beginning to a good ending. Because when you feel horrible and you put your head down, or you hear that chup or that lech, or whatever it is, you put your head down and you feel terrible about it, what's the next thing you're going to do? Oh, Allah, forgive me. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Mm. Man, Allah, forgive me. And then you start to cry. That is the process, right? And when you're alone, you have much more clarity because there's no distractions seeing things, hearing things. That's why when thinking about your sins is one of the strongest ways to obtain mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're doing that at least five times a day for about three to five minutes, yeah. 
Hell of a yeah, no doubt. Powerful. I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you, you've done the 30 for 30 uh, mm -hmm. series with Sheikh Omar for so long now at this point. Um, there must have been a verse that you guys went over in Sultul Fasilat because again at the end of the day, Shahr Ramadan al the Fi al Quran, that this is a month where people are trying their hardest to connect to the book of Allah. Yeah. Um, in regards to istiqamah, Allah reveals a beautiful ayah Sultul Fasilat where he says, Inna ladina qadu thum Rabbun Allah thum istiqamu, right? That those are the people who claim that uh, we believe in Allah, Rabbun Allah, thum istiqamu, and then they stick to it. Satanazadu mm. alayhim al malaika. Right? And, and the angels descend upon them, mm. right? And they say, do not fear, do not be upset, right? And they give them the glad tidings of Jannah. Mm. Um, how do you kind of share that as a verse to kind of like not motivate, like you said, because motivation, again, at the end of the day will not last forever, but set a course of discipline, right? Because again, Allah is promising that the people who say, I mean, and again, la ilaha illallah is such a huge claim. Right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't realize that. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the ayat in the Quran that say, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. The, the, the college kind of young demographic, we actually just finished Surah Al-Hujurat, where half of the ayat begin with, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Yeah. And oftentimes we translate that as like, Oh, you who believe. But like, one of, one of my teachers, he said, you know, translate Ya ayyuha ladina amanu more as, Oh, you who claim to believe. Mm. Because like, you can't automatically just assume that just because I said it, now I'm like in the club. I like I I I qualify. But when you say Ya you Ladina Amani, you gotta check off the rest of your list to make sure that what calls after mm. is something that you do. So, you know, thumma mm. They say they believe in God, but then they stick to it, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean in regards to just like the 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 average Muslim, right? We're just trying our hardest to be mm. good, we're trying our hardest to abide by Allah. Mm. What does it mean to like say that statement that I believe in God, but then stick to it? What does that What does that mean? And like, and and, and why? And if you don't mind sharing, why Allah gives you such a beautiful reward, saying that the angels will descend upon you, and say that you don't have to fear, you don't have to worry, when a person is sticking to that statement and they abide by the actions of that statement. No, that's a beautiful, beautiful verse. Jazakallah, Jazakallah khair. I mean. Because it's interesting in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the ones that say, they make that claim, and then it says, Thumma. Mm. And Thumma in Arabic, Tufid al Tarahi. So mm. you, you say a statement, but then after you make that statement, you have to follow it up with actions. And istiqama is talab al iqama. It is though you are requesting to be upright. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. It's the same verb. Istiqama mustaqim. So guide us to the straight path. Mm. And what's interesting that the Salaf used to say is that this guide us to the Sirat al Mustaqim, the straight, upright path, guide us ila Sirat wa fi Sirat. So even though you've guided us to the straight path, okay, I know the truth, I know, I believe this is true, am I consistent on that? Yeah. So ila Sirat, I've arrived there. Fi Sirat, while I'm there, I can still go astray. It can still happen. I can still say that I'm Muslim and I can still not try my best to be my best. Right. And that's what's important. You said, you know, the, the average Muslim, it's always, always want to mention that the one that is trying is religious. Because sometimes you say religiosity, we think of companions, you know, the light shines from the ceiling. And then, you know, it's like Mawu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. They're the best, mashallah. But indirectly, we may think that we're not worthy, that we're not good enough. Our mind starts to become fixed. It doesn't be, have a growth mindset. We, we just go through stuff. We don't grow through stuff, right? So you're trying to grow through everything. When you make the mistakes, that's an opportunity to grow. Because making a mistake is an opportunity for you to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Right? So that's why when you think about that stuff, that is the istiqamah. Make a mistake, you get back up and you keep moving because you have that foundation, that connection with Allah. That is the beautiful process of religiosity making the effort okay it was two times a day you prayed but you have the intention to do five but next week you pray three times a day the week after that you prayed five you feel you feel great somebody tells you what are you trying to be who are you? you go back down to four mm. you stay away from that person you cut them off on whatsapp you don't <laughs> respond to their dms right mm. you go back five that's the process man it's not easy but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it difficult because it has to be earned. Yeah. It has to be earned. And you feel, subhanAllah, when you earn it, you don't even realize it. People say you changed. When you're praying for it, it's like, wow, 
You don't even realize it because Allah has put that sakina, tranquility, tawfiq, success in you, in you, within you because your intention was pure with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think when it's that thumma staqamu, those that make this statement and then they stand firm, Allah gives that reward that the angels descend upon them and they say, have no fear, nor shall you grieve. Fear before the action, grief after the action. And he congratulates you with Jannah because of your efforts. Mm. And that's what's most important. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned something that was really interesting. Uh, the idea of like supporting each other, even like when you make those mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of the cultural tragedies I think that's very relevant in our time is people, especially online, because again, online everyone's like a superhero right like it's easy yeah. to like just like say what's on your mind when you're behind like a keyboard and a screen yeah. but then in person i don't know how many of those people would say those things those exact same ways so the, one of the, the the key elements of the prophetic community you look at the prophet sallam you look at the sahaba and they, they, they used to motivate each other right they used to like literally compete with one another in a good way that would help each other like level up right mm -hmm. They wouldn't put each other down. I feel like one of the challenges of mm -hmm. our time is that we're really facing a lot of roadblocks. Again, like we have our own personal demons. Like you mentioned, like we get into our own heads sometimes, right? Like I prayed twice a day. I didn't use to pray at all before, but then I'm like, oh, Shaitan, you know, tells me like, well, what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like enough of a challenge, but then you have X factors of other people telling you like, why? You know, why are you even doing this, right? Like you're not doing Islam justice and this and that all that stuff so you really live in like this like ultra hater community sometimes right like you're like people are just trying to like get at you at your worst times and you know subhanallah everyone's the first person to call somebody out and Sheikh, you know this like there's an art to nasiha right so how can a person and not and, and everybody here will play multiple roles they'll be the person who's trying to stay disciplined but they will also try to help other people their friends their family their community They'll try to support them in their, their journey of discipline as well, their journey of istiqamah as well. Mm -hmm. What are your advices when it comes to like supporting other people in a community? I think the first thing that needs to be felt is love. Like you really need to, I always say, you know, it's good to want good for someone, which is great, which is standard. But when that person feels that you want them to win, it's another level. Like when the person really feels that you want me to win in life, I think that's a different, that's different. So you, 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 you give, sometimes it's, you know, I believe in you, telling your friend, I believe in you. You know, if they feel down, you come there, you talk to them, you tell them, no, you're capable of this. You know, I believe that you can do this. And simply sometimes, I love you for the sake of Allah. Mm. That's something the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, I love you for the sake of Allah. Someone says it to you, you say, and I love you for that in which you love me. We have to realize some people have never been told, I love you, from their own parents. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's important to, to have people that are around you that want you to win in life. So when giving that nasiha, firstly, depends on who it is, but generally, you don't even mention the thing you want to give the nasiha in. You want to ensure that they feel your energy, that you care for them, and that you want what's best for them. And then from that, once you establish that relationship, they maybe say, you know, look, I would want someone to tell me if it was me. Yeah. That's what I always do. I would want someone to tell me. So this is why I'm telling you. But I'm not saying that I'm better than you. And I'm not judging you. Mm. So that's how it ultimately with a, with a true friend or true rafiq. Yeah. No. Gentleness. Gentleness. Man. As well. I mean, Definitely man, th there, there's such an absence of like just rifq in, in a lot of the, the, the community we have nowadays. Where it's just like people give advice. But it's like, and, and again, Sheikh, you know, there, there's time to be soft. There's time to be a little bit more kind of firm. Mm. But starting with that firmness and kind of just pushing through just with that, that harshness, mm. it's never been the way of the Prophet Oh, you reminded me yeah. of something, man. Yeah, I mean, the Prophet said, yes. He said, kindness was not in anything except that it beautified it. Mm. You reminded me of something, man. There's an old OG, man. He's uh, Abdurrahman. He's from Colombia. I remember I was in Houston one time where we were sitting together, and apparently this is back then. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty old here. I don't know if you've heard of a guy named Snoop Dogg. I don't know if they heard Snoop Dogg. Maybe. He's the guy that narrates <laughs> National Geographic, I think. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's, your, that's right. Yes, mashallah. But apparently he became Muslim, right? This was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
And I remember I said to myself, who does he think he is trying to become Muslim? Man, you know what this OG said? And he said it so smooth. He, he was just like chilling. He said he's doing the best that he can, bro. He mm -hmm. said he's doing the best that he can. I said, oh, snap. That really put me in check, like for real. He's doing the best that he can. Who am I to judge him? Mm. You know, and that was, see, when you're around OGs like that, they give you advice, but not to your face, not directly at you. Yeah. So when he said it, he was like, he's doing the best that he can. I said, man, that was straight at me, and I love it, yeah. you know, because he's really trying to tell me, man, you really can't judge anybody. It's not for you to judge that person. Mm. He has his struggles, you know. Yeah, I mean, Allah, Allah says about the Prophet, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْ Right, that, and if you had been harsh with them, they would have just kind of disbanded away from you. Mm -hmm. um, to think about, subhanAllah, like how gentle he had to be with the people around him to make sure that they stayed a cohesive unit. It's mm -hmm. powerful, subhanAllah. And beautiful with that verse, yeah. you know, some, some scholars mentioned that even the letters that were used in the verse, right. they're very soft, Light. easy letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He uses very heavy words, مفخم, like your mouth yeah. is full of the air because the next verse says, if you were someone that was hard and hard-hearted, they would have infaddu. Mm. Infaddu really means like exploded. They would totally have scattered away from you. You know? Yeah. How many times? Yeah. How many, they would have totally scattered away from you. Sometimes yeah. when you come around with the shaykh and the youth, they're like, assalamu alaikum. They're, they're out. They're not trying to, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's a beautiful verse. I mean, some scholars mentioned that with the, even the letters that were chosen in that verse to show even with your behavior. It's yeah. important. Shaykh, uh, Middle Khan Nights, obviously we mentioned in the beginning. What are your go-tos when it comes to just making sure that you don't slip up at this time of Ramadan? What do you have to do? What are your non-negotiables these 10 days that you have to do to make sure that like, again, I, I, each, each third of Ramadan, as one of those hadith mentioned, has like a theme, right? The first 10 nights has a theme, the middle 10 nights has a theme, last 10 nights has a theme. How do you make sure that your middle 10 nights are something that you utilize to, 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 to make sure that you're ready for the last 10? What do you have to do in these middle 10 nights? For me, the, the middle 10 is kind of like the whole 30, but the middle 10, I'm really, really, really in the groove. I have to have some kind of fitness routine. I mean, I have to move yeah. because it really conditions my mind when I'm alone and I'm tired and I'm exhausted. And then I say I'm done. But in reality, I know that I'm not. So I give it extra. Mm. One more. That, yeah, because I know that if I reach this point, that's only a gateway to reach another point. And I pushed myself to that degree to say, you know what? I start to think about things. I start to think about, like you mentioned discipline. Another person was my, uh, <clears throat> my younger sister. And you know, she passed away from cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was at her deathbed and I was telling her, Layla Allah in her ear, Layla. I think about those moments. And I always, when I look at that cancer sign, it always reminds me of like, okay, you know, you made some promises to her, not which I did. And uh, you can't sit on your bleep, mm -hmm. right? You have to work, you have to keep moving. So physical exertion reminds me of that exertion in life that I need to do, right? You know, you, if you know you can always push yourself, keep doing it. And Ramadan is such a beautiful catalyst for that because make sure that you're praying in the middle of the night at least to get up and pray to Rakat. Is sleep better than that? As-salatu khayru min al-noom. Prophet says salatu fajr. So sacrifice those 30 minutes of sleeping. I was going to say snoring, but of sleeping, right? to get up and do something much more beneficial. And really for me, the strategy for that for me is to try to sleep early. Mm. Sleep early, like after Tarawih, I pray eight, after Tarawih, go straight to the house, sit with the family, and then after that, try to get some sleep to where I can wake up a little before Fajr, inshallah. So you didn't go to Suhoor Fest? Sorry? I'm I'm Suhoor Fest? I'm no, man, I'm yeah. I told him to bring I'm me I'm some stuff again. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. No, Sheikh, um, we appreciate you being here, you know, yeah, again, cool. at the end of the day. Uh, Ramadan, again, like everybody kind of, we, we mentioned, it's, it's, it's a marathon. It's not, yeah, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, you got to make sure that you stick to it, inshallah, for 29 to 30 days. Yeah, um, and, you know, me and Ustad Murphy, we always kind of share the sentiment that the way that you celebrate on the day of Eid is just a testimony to how well you push yourself on the month of Ramadan. Mm, like the like Eid nap hits hard because... <laughs> You, did, you, you didn't rest for 30 days, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's a thing. And, and, and the people that yeah, don't- I didn't know that, man. The people that, <laughs> the, the, the people that don't nap hard on either, the people that nap too hard in Ramadan. So I'm just gonna say it like it is. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I can't lie, it's Ramadan. Um, so 
<laughs> but outside of Ramadan, it's outside Ramadan, yeah, yeah, it's you know, you know, we'll see. Uh, but alhamdulillah, you know, uh, again, we appreciate you being here, yeah, Sheikh. You know, Jazakallah uh, to everyone for for staying with us tonight. We appreciate you guys. Um, may Allah Taala allow this to be a beautiful night of acceptance. Uh, of you know gaining the pleasure and the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shaykh we'll let you lead off with a dua inshallah to end the session um, and put some barakah inshallah some remembrance of Allah ta'ala at the end of the, the session inshallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya hayy ya qayyum bi rahmatika nasagheet aslih lana shu'unana kullah wa la takilna ila anfusina tarfata'in ya rabbil alameen Allahum agfidhilu bina wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar Allahumma unsur ikhwanana al-mustadafin fi Gaza. Oh Allah, help the weak and destitute that are in Gaza, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help the weak and destitute that are in Kashmir, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help the weak and destitute that are in Sudan, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help the weak and destitute that are in China, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help the weak and destitute that are in Nigeria, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, ifilana dhubina wa zidna ilman, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Help the weak and destitute that are all around the deep, the east portions of the world and the west portions of the world, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Feed the ones that are that are that are that are starving, and allow those that are that are thirsty to bless them with irrigation. Ya Rabbil Alameen, to feed them and to 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 nourish them. Ya Rabbil Alameen, but nourish them with iman. Ya Aziz, Ya Qawi, Ya Mateen, Ya Dal Jalali, Wa Dal Karam. Wa Sallallahu Wa Sallam Wa Barak Ala Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbi Ajma'in. Jazakallah Khairan, everybody. I'm just going to ask everyone just for a small favor, inshallah, if everyone could just kind of grab a chair that they're sitting on, and uh, our volunteers will walk around with the dollies to put the chairs on. Next Friday, inshallah, we have a treat for you guys. Second time around, Mufti Muntasar, inshallah, will be here next uh, Friday night to spend uh, Ramadan nights with us. So inshallah, we'll see you guys next Friday at 10 p.m. again. Jazakumullah khairan, everybody. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh. Oh, yeah, come on. Jazakumullah khairan, man. I appreciate it. Oh, oh, snap. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. I know, that was close. Nice. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know your moody stand.